So let us look on the multiplication operator as uh, our yeah, canonical or very telling example in infinite dimensions. Uh, so the, the multiplication operator, and let us take it on L2 of R. Uh, so I denote it by Q, and this is the operator in L2 of R. Uh, which, okay, maybe let me write it down again. So Q of f of a function f at the point t is just t times f of t. Uh, it multiplies uh, with the argument. Yeah, and so we have seen this guy, uh, the spectrum of this guy is all of the real line, uh, but uh, it's only continuous spectrum. Huh? So it doesn't have eigen uh, vectors because these eigen functions, they, they would have to be localized at lambda. Uh, okay, and those delta peaks are not in our Hilbert space. So, but what we have are approximate eigenvectors, which means uh, functions which are very close, which are localized in a small neighborhood, which are almost uh, eigenfunctions. Yeah, and so I mean we can try to work with them. Uh, so we can, uh, we have no functions which are exactly localized at lambda. Uh, so if I'm looking at lambda, lambda is in the spectrum. Uh, each lambda, each real lambda is in a spectrum, but it's not an eigenvalue uh, because there is no function localized there. But if we take a small interval or any interval around lambda, but in particular also small ones, we can find functions which are localized there. Uh, so we have functions which are zero outside and which are only different from zero inside this interval. Uh, so those functions are localized just in a small neighborhood about uh, lambda. And for those functions, the effect of Q is very close to just multiplying the function with lambda. Uh, not exactly, because I mean it multiplies with values in the small interval, uh, but uh, the difference between multiplying uh, by lambda and multiplying by the argument for such functions is very small. Uh, and we can make it as small as we like. Uh, so this means we have here functions f, uh, which are localized. And so let us call maybe the the space of such functions h delta. Huh? So this is kind of approximate uh, eigenspaces. Um, yeah, so maybe this h delta for, for, for any interval delta, let me define this as the L2 functions, which are zero outside of this interval. Huh? So f of t is equal to zero for all t, which are not in this interval. Yeah, and then again, I can take an orthogonal uh, projection onto this space, and maybe let me denote it now by E delta. Uh, so E delta, so this is the projection from H to H delta. Uh, so the orthogonal projection. And so what we get here is a collection of uh, sub-Hilbert spaces for each delta and corresponding projections, and they behave in a very similar way as we had it before for the eigenspaces. Uh, so, uh, so namely we have, so first of all, if I take two intervals which are dis disjoint, then uh, the corresponding uh, spaces are, are orthogonal. So if I take uh, delta 1 and delta 2, which are disjoint, then we have that h of delta 1 is orthogonal to h of delta 2. Uh, I mean, because uh, if I have here delta 1 and I have here delta 2, then a function in h delta 1 is a function which is localized here. Uh, and the function here is a function which is uh, localized here. And if I take the inner product between two such functions, then of course the product of them is zero everywhere, uh, because they don't have a, a joint support. Yeah, okay. And so this means also in particular that uh, if I, an, in such a situation, um, then I can also take the projection onto the union of delta 1 and delta 2, and this is just the sum of the two ones for each of them. Uh, so this means if I have delta is equal the disjoint union of delta 1 and delta 2, then the corresponding E delta is the sum of E delta 1 plus E delta 2. Uh, because those two guys also commute and the product of them is zero because uh, they are orthogonal. Uh, so this means in particular uh, 
those two things here, I can also say that the space corresponding to delta in such a situation is again the direct sum of h for the interval delta 1 plus h for the interval delta 2. Uh, so we again we can decompose our space now not in a direct sum of eigenspaces but in a direct sum of, of approximate eigenspaces. Uh, if we just choose here spaces uh, which, which are disjoint. So in particular this means if I cover all of R with a disjoint union of such sets delta i, then I can write my h as a direct sum of the h delta i's. Uh, okay, so still I can decompose my Hilbert space into a direct sum of subspaces, and those subspaces I can choose more or less as, as approximate eigenspaces, but it's not that I have somehow the smallest uh, subspaces here which I could choose. Huh? In, in a finite dimensional case, uh, there are actually a finite number of subspaces uh, which I cannot make any smaller. Huh? Okay, and then I get a, get a direct sum of those. But here there, there are no smallest uh, such components. I, I can make this, de this decomposition here finer and finer, but there is not, not in a sense, uh, one uh, where I cannot uh, refine it anymore. Yeah, okay, so th that's what I can do, and this is somehow the, 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 the replacement of our eigenspaces. Uh, but now the question is, how can I write Q in this kind of basis? Huh? Because, I mean, or in, in each for each of these uh, eigenspaces, the action of Q is not, not just multiplication by lambda, but it's only an approximate one, huh? which means I should really, if I want to get a representation for my Q, I should make this interval smaller and smaller and hope that I can get a limit. Huh? And of course, I mean, if I, if I have a sum, then the limit should be an integral. But, but let us see maybe a bit more precisely how this might work. So the question is, how can we represent Q with this kind of data? Uh, and so first, so let's observe if the interval is small and I take an element from this approximate eigenspace, then the action of Q on X is not equal but close to lambda X. Uh, so if lambda is in this interval delta. Uh, uh, okay, so the multiplication with the argument uh, of my function in this interval is more or less the same as just multiplying it with any number in the any fixed number in this interval. Uh, okay, uh, so qx is approximately uh, lambda x. Uh, so this mean, means the difference between this and this goes to zero if we make delta smaller and smaller. And of course, we should keep the, the norm of x equal to one. Let's say, yeah. Okay, so uh, we have something like this, and this means if I now want to write Q of X, somehow to imitate what we did before for diagonalizing our, uh, op our matrix, uh, I can now, for any decomposition of R into such subintervals, I can write this as a sum over I, Q E delta I times X, huh? yeah, just by taking essentially this here for our sums, which I have here. Uh, and now, if the delta i's are small, then the q applied to this guy here is very close to uh, lambda i times this element here, e delta i of x, where lam lambda i is some element in this interval delta i. Uh, good. Okay, so this is only approximate, but of course the idea is that we should refine now these deltas, making them smaller and smaller and smaller, and then hopefully this sum here converges to something, and this approximate here in the limit becomes an equality. Uh, so this means what we could expect, or at least hope for, is that the Q corresponds to the limit where we make this uh, division into intervals, finer and finer, of the sum over i, and here I have lambda i e delta i.
Uh, so you see again, I mean, I'm writing the Q as the sum over the lambda i x e, de x e delta i. Uh, and this should be true for all x. Uh, so we can write this for the operator uh, itself. And now, of course, the idea is, uh, or I mean, if if those guys here, if the e's would just be functions in the ordinary sense, then this here would be a definition of a of a of a integral, of a Stieltjes integral. Uh, so this uh, is something which should go in the limit, go to lambda d e lambda, hmm? where this e lambda here is now a function of lambda, which corresponds to e of the set minus infinity to lambda. Hmm? Because we here we're taking essentially the increments of this function. Huh? So this will be an increment over a small interval, and then we are multiplying it with an element from this interval. Hmm? Yeah, okay. And so I mean this is from here to here. If the function e here is a, is a nice distribution function, then this is a Stieltjes integral. Oh, okay, so I mean in, in this background video, I have talked a little bit about how we define uh, Lebesgue Stieltjes integrals, and uh, this is essentially this procedure if we have here a function which is a distribution function, which means it comes from zero, it's, it's monotonically increasing, uh, and it goes to a finite value. And actually, here we have, like for probability measures, so this, this, this distribution function would really go from, from zero to one. Okay, so this means what we have here is essentially a kind of operator valued Stieltjes integral. Huh? And I have to talk a little bit about, about this, huh? because it, it's really, the, the point is to give meaning to this, and of course to see that we have here uh, yeah, guys which uh, allow us to define such an integral. Huh? Okay, but, but this is really, I mean, this is really, this is the spectral theorem, which is true in this form, in infinite dimensions, and also for unbounded operators, if we only make correct sense of all the quantities which show up here. Uh, so let me first say, so this is true, uh, that we really have that Q can be written as something like this, and not only for, for this special Q, but actually for any self joint operator. So this is true in general. self-adjoint T. Huh? And our self-adjoint T can be written as an operator valued Stieltjes integral. So it can be written as an operator valued Stieltjes integral. So this means we can write any self joint operator T as the integral over lambda d e lambda uh, for a corresponding operator valued function e lambda, which we have to see that they exist in general for any T. Uh, so I mean here in this setting for the Q, uh, the e of lambda was the projection onto functions from minus infinity uh, to lambda. Huh? So there we see quite precisely what this should be. Huh? Okay, but in general we have to see that such guys exist. Huh? And usually such a function E lambda is usually called a resolution of the identity or maybe a, a projection valued measure. Huh? So, so you can say it's a distribution function of a projection uh, valued measure. Okay, so what we have to understand a little bit better is that it's actually true that any server joint unbounded operator T can be written as an operator valued Stieltjes integral in this form for a corresponding uh, resolution of identity uh, which is the collection of all those E lambdas. Uh, so for a corresponding resolution of identity, uh, which is a function, let's say, which maps lambda to E of lambda, uh, which has, of course, the properties which we also have in this uh, specific setting. Uh, but I will now, I have now to specify more precisely what this is in general. Uh, but maybe let me also yeah, say that, I mean, instead of E of lambda, 
I'm also writing e with sub lambda. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. So so now I should tell you what what really is in general a resolution of uh, the identity. <coughs> 